Colour plays a central role in Indian consciousness and we need only think of the deep red worn by a traditional Indian bride or the glowing orange of the marigold garlands that adorn the idols and celebrants at festive occasions. Indian food is similarly colourful and this week Yudhika draws inspiration from the culinary spectrum. Bright colours are associated with joy and happiness. I'm keeping it colourful in the kitchen today and preparing two dishes that are perfect for a party or celebration and a cake you definitely don't want to miss out on. On the menu, we have sweet corn cakes, braised prawn and pumpkin, and for dessert, a magical bubblegum flavoured unicorn cake. To start with, six eggs going into the mixing bowl. Beat the eggs until they're light and fluffy. To this, gradually add sugar while you're still beating. The mixture does tend to look a bit runny when the sugar dissolves into the egg. Give it a few minutes, it will come together beautifully and fluff up once again. Bubblegum essence and vanilla essence going in now. Work that in. Add half the flour in. You can guesstimate. And again, fold that in. Try not to overwork the batter. Remove the large lumps. Next ingredient, buttermilk. Buttermilk adds a lovely flavour to cakes. Work that through. If you overwork the batter, you're going to get quite a pancake looking dense cake. Remaining flour going in now. When I was a kid, I just loved to watch my mum and grand bake. It didn't matter what they were baking, it was always a magical experience for me. To this, add sunflower oil. It does seem like a fair bit of oil. We're making four layers of cake today. A lovely colourful stack. Now that does look like it's split. Don't worry too much. Give it a few minutes. The flour starts to absorb the oil and it forms a thick silky batter. That looks great. It looks like thick crumpet batter. To this, a sprinkling of salt. Just a touch. I'm going to add some vinegar and bicarb going on top of the vinegar. Stir that through. I do a fair bit of baking and have convinced myself that I don't need to go to gym. The batter is now ready for the next step. Let's divide the batter. Next one. Now to tint the batter, I've got four colors here. This is gel food coloring. Got pink, purple, blue and yellow. You can always change the colours around if you like. We've got some yellow here. Use a tablespoon. Swirl the colour through. Remember you don't want to overwork the batter still. Next colour, let's go with pink. Swirl the pink into the batter. Remember to make the cakes a little bright in colour as once you bake them they turn slightly golden which actually affects their colour. That pink is beautiful. Next for the purple. I find this colour works beautifully. Purple is one of my favourite colours. That's lovely. For the blue, be extra cautious when you're adding blue to batters and icing or you might wind up with those blue teeth. That's done. Let's get these into baking tins. I've got four 20 centimetre grease and lime tins here. Pour that in. Purple. The yellow. This looks like a large dose of sunshine. And lastly, the blue. It's impossible not to be cheerful when you're making this cake. The cakes are going to be baked at 170 degrees Celsius in a preheated oven. My next dish is a braised prawn and pumpkin curry. I always thought you had to have pumpkin on its own or prawn on its own, but this combination is something I learned about while traveling through Asia. Sunflower oil going into the pan. To this, some mustard seeds, cumin seeds, say about two pinches, some finely chopped onion, a teaspoon of salt, I always use coarse salt when I cook. And one dried red chilli. Break that in, sauté until the moisture evaporates and the onion turns golden. To this, add the pumpkin and some garlic. Sauté this for a few minutes. You want the natural sugars in the pumpkin to develop, adding flavour to this dish. I'm scraping the pan, releasing the onions that are sticking to the pan. The pumpkin is glossy, pour in some water. Pumpkins almost submerge in this liquid. It's as easy as that. Simmer until the pumpkin is tender. We're going to add the prawn just before serving. Cover this with a tight-fitting lid. 
And let's get on to the sweet corn cakes. And the first ingredient going into the mixing bowl, the cream style sweet corn. To this, some chopped spring onion. I've got two teaspoons of sugar also going in. Salt. Chopped green chili. I'm going to add just a touch to this. Chopped coriander. We've got some baking powder. One whole egg. And some milk. Use a wooden spoon and mix those ingredients together. This can be served any time of day as a breakfast fritter, at lunchtime as a side dish, and as a snack as well. Spice this up now with a touch of chili powder. Work that in. It's not always necessary to have lots of chili in your food. To this, I'm adding some cake flour. We're using cream style sweet corn, which uses a little more flour than tin sweet corn. Season with some pepper. We've got the salt in already. I quite enjoy pepper, adding a little extra. That's our sweet corn cake batter done. Let's check on the pumpkin. This should be ready. Breaking a piece. Aha, that is tender. This pumpkin is bright orange in color, even after we've simmered it down. Now, add the prawns. I'm using prawns that have been shelled and deveined for this recipe. Don't use prawn meat. You don't need to stir the prawns through. There's enough heat in the pan and steam to cook them down. I've got my spice going in here. Some magic masala. Cover the pan with a tight-fitting lid and leave this to steam through for about two minutes. That's done, let's start with the corn cakes. I've got the pan on here. Some sunflower oil now going in. Swirl the oil around. Use a pan with a thick bottom for this. Drop spoonfuls of this batter into the hot oil. Press that down a bit. I love these bright yellow flecks in this batter. This makes a lovely alternative to a morning omelet. The little slick of nonstick spray ensures they do not get stuck to the pan. They're quite easy to lift and flip them over. These have turned golden in color. Give them a few more moments. That's the first one done. And the next one. And that's the last one. The bubblegum cakes have been cooling at room temperature. It's time to frost and stack the cakes. I've got the first cake on the cake board here. And this is the pink layer. We've got some buttercream frosting here. Scoop going on top. Use a little spatula and spread that over. You could also use cream cheese frosting. I'm using buttercream here. Looks like sunshine. Make sure the cakes are lined up. Another layer of frosting going on top. You don't have to worry about the icing going all the way to the sides. We're going to work on that in a moment. Purple layer going over next. More buttercream going on top. Be patient when you're assembling cakes. The first time I stacked a cake, I was a bit impatient. Ended up frosting a warm cake and had the entire thing slide apart. And now for the blue bubblegum layer. It looks a tinge green after it's been baked. And there we have all our layers stacked. Now if you are nervous about frosting the sides of the cake, use a bamboo skewer down the center to hold the cakes in place. For the sides of the cake, more buttercream, just little bits at a time, and rub that over. You can see we cover up all those gaps between the layers. Gently turn the cake. A cake turner is quite handy when you're doing this. Our first skinny layer of frosting is done. Now for the top. Cover the top of the cake. Scrape the excess off the sides. You can also start to spot where it's uneven. The cake goes into the refrigerator so the buttercream can set. We're going to repeat this step a few times, chill well after each layer of frosting and use the opportunity to perfect the sides and get them perfectly straight. And because this is a magical enchanted cake, we've got one made already. It wouldn't be a unicorn cake without a unicorn. Position this on the cake. I'm going to pipe some buttercream here and I've got all the colors used in the cake in this piping bag. I've got some mini ice cream cones here of that frosting and pipe it in. I'm using some chocolate balls, making little ice cream cones here. Using a plain nozzle, I'm going to pipe a row of dots around the bottom of the cake. That's just going to finish up this edge. Stick little edible flowers on the sides of the cake. 
I'm going to add another chocolate here. This cake looks absolutely beautiful, definitely magical and quite enchanting. I've been playing with colour in the kitchen today. There's pops of colour in our savoury dishes, which are sweet corn cakes, and we've got the braised prawn and pumpkin curry. I'm serving the sweet corn cakes with an avocado salsa, bringing in more colour to this meal. Preparing this meal and working with colours has made me cheerful. I hope these dishes bring some cheer and joy to your home.